All right, happy to be here. Uh, it's always good to speak to the student groups because one day you might decide, well, that was really expensive. This, this uh, <laughs> school that I went to, I might need a job. And uh, sometimes, you know, maybe you'll go in the military, maybe not. More importantly, a lot of you know military and there's ROTC programs at your, at your colleges. How many people know of uh, ROTC students at their college? At least in general, okay. So these are the guys. This is the information you have, and, and hopefully it'll give you a little bit of background to say, hey, you know, come over, we'd like to do a joint event about the military, you know, and, and invite them over. Uh, also, I hope to tell you about a little bit of interesting comparisons between my college experience and the college experience you might have had. Uh, in case you might not know, I did go uh, attend West Point, United States Military Academy. I'll talk about uh, similarities and differences a little bit later, but one of them is you, you can't skip class. Uh, and they start at 7, so, and that's generally after uh, some fun, fun things here. So there, there, are, there are three major academies, uh, there are other, but three major ones. West Point's in the upper left, that's the, the Cadet Chapel. On uh, the lower left there, that's, that's the Air Force Academy. It's a bit newer than the others, in case you can't tell. Uh, and o over in the upper right, that's the Naval, Naval Academy. So, at each of these locations, we have large, expansive, chapels that are referred to. So uh, this, is, this is what we're talking about. How do I feel with these things kind of lording over me? Uh, first, I also went to the Ohio State University. <laughs> if there are any Michigan fans here, you might, you might sadly remember despite, despite trying to forget. This is me being extremely happy. This is right after the uh, game of the century at the Ohio State University. 100,000 fans storming the field. It was great. Uh, who here is actually a sports fan of any sort? <laughs> okay, we got about 10%. <laughs> I just wanted everybody to understand that, that, I feel, that, that I'm the minority in the minority. <laughs> Atheists don't watch football. <laughs> but I do, and you can see how happy I am. <laughs> Wolverines, that's the mascot of uh, Michigan. And uh, their tears are young. <laughs> the point of this slide, besides to say that, that I did go here locally to the Ohio State University, I'm very happy about it. The point of this story is that we have a fanatical devotion to other sorts of divine sources, <laughs> <laughs> like the football team. Now the concern is, what am I really cheering for, right, here at Ohio State? The leaders at the Ohio State University, Jim Trefsel, that's the coach also known as Senator Trestle. Uh, then these are, these are two football players. They're very well thought of, very well liked, and uh, revered, one might say. And what are they doing with them here at Ohio State? St. John's, St. John's Arena. It's, it's just right here. 12,000 people are in the building, and I'll tell you, as big as that arena is, nobody thinks that it can contain the majesty of Jim Trestle. <laughs> All 
right? This, this, and this is a big deal. So as people look up to these, these uh, coaches, they're not seeing individuals who are Christians. They're not there because they're great speakers or because they're of their, their quality within, within uh, Christianity. What they're there for is for the Ohio State University. That's that brand. You know, the things that they do for Ohio State on the football field build their brand. And that's the highest grossing brand in sports, at least as of a couple of years ago, for several years, since 2002, as far as I know. So it's, it's one of the biggest brands. So you take that brand at 12,000 people in OSU facilities, they paid for it. OSU facilities, though, we already talked about how important that is. The OSU brand and, and Jesus. And all of a sudden, what you have is what they're looking for. A big Christian cross instead, you know, applied to the Ohio State brand. So, so this is something that's local and it might be an issue with some of your local universities as well. And am I really cheering for that? You know, it, it bothers me. The alumni, they call up and they're like, oh, you went to Ohio State. You should give us some money. And I say, you know, I'm having a little trouble with that. You know, because of what you're, what you're using your brand for. Now I want to segue into, you know, this is college. We have some similarities and differences. You know, these, these leaders in the university that are using that, in the university and the military, what they do. We've got social networks, fear of retribution, long-term alum, alumni network. You know, those things are, are applications, they're associations that you make, whether you're in the military or in a college. These are things that are important to you. It's something that you're going to look back on and take with you. They become part of your identity. Uh, that in the year of our Lord, that's a side thing. That's going to be written on your diploma unless you complain about it. You know, think about it now. You know, when do you get your diploma? It's not the year 2008. It's in the year of our Lord 2008. So think about that before you get your uh, get that handed to you. And that fanatical devotion to group. You remember that silly picture of me? All right. It's similar in the military, but there's different stakes. All right. This is me in Baghdad. That's a picture. That's his shotgun. All right. So. Uh, I'm not particularly proud, but, but uh, these are the things that I was sent out to do, all right? And, and with me were 70-ton tanks and, and state-of-the-art jet fighters with bombs, all right, and guns. So, so what we're sent out to do and what our leaders are inspiring us to do in the military, you know, is different stakes. It's on, it's on a whole different level. And it's very important for me at West Point as I was going in, as I was leading, you know, seeing these leaders as I was learning at the academy, it was very important to me that these leaders are leading me to do things that you know are okay and not something that's their personal personal religious agenda. Sometimes, though, I wonder. Okay, these are leaders. Now, on, on the left side, you have the the uh, Bush White House. On the right side, the current administration. Okay, and and don't you know Obama's Christian? All right. So when we wonder as we as we as we see hope and change, some of you might be left. Uh, as we see hope and change with Obama, is there a change in the military as well? You know, on the left side you have Rumsfeld and Pete Guerin, that's the Secretary of the Army. Uh, that picture is from a video he did at the Pentagon to say how great Christianity is and how important it is. It was at the Pentagon. You know, and he's listed there as Honorable Pete Guerin, presidential appointee. Again, that's taking the military brand and applying it to Christianity, trying to associate those two things. So that eventually it's not the military or the, the American agenda that, that's, that's driving national interest, it's the Christian agenda. This is something I'm concerned about. On the right side of the Obama uh, administration, that's a carryover. Gates, he's a carryover, Secretary of Defense, so it's the same guy. And down at the bottom, help me out, Sean. You too. The, uh, the, the new Secretary of the Army, he has a 90% uh, approval rating from the Christian Coalition. So the new guy that you know Obama appointed, not different apparently, because this is the kind of intelligence briefing that was coming out was when I was in Iraq. This is a cover of a top secret global global security briefing. It's got a quote from Isaiah six eight. It says, "Send me, send me." They're telling all the leaders, "Hey, you know these these apparently Christian soldiers that are praying on the picture want them to send me." And in case anybody's reading this, this is basically the rest of that quote from the Bible. Send me so that I can basically destroy not only, not only physical cities, but an entire culture. All right. So this is the concern that I have. As I, as I was at West Point, as I was in Iraq, in the military, those fellow students at, at the academy, you know, I don't want to be sent out for, uh, for, this, kind of, for this kind of mission. 
This is the point in my briefings when I look out, most people are like, oh, I'm happy, Camp Quest. It's about kids. People are smiling. This is the point in my briefing when I look out and everybody's got slack jawed and, and wide eyed. Like, you know, I feel like I'm doing something. Well, I guess that's what I'm trying to do with this slide. So, uh, so as I go in, I also understand that, that that Christian leadership may have a problem with me personally. Because this is an officer record brief. This is the whole, the whole great swath of what I've done in the military. This is what the promotion, promotion people look at. This is what the awards people look at. This is what leaders have to say, okay, who am I to the military? All right, and if we, because I'm marked. And it starts with the dog tags and expands to this, your, your record briefing, starting at West Point. Religion. All right, mine says eight. All right. But a lot of people are really concerned about this. They don't feel comfortable being themselves, especially with all that Christianity and the leadership, and at the lower levels, trust me. That's what mine says, and I always wonder, you know, are they going to stop me, you know, from getting promoted? You know, every time you don't get, get an award or a promotion, you wonder, you know, is it because, it beca is it because of this, uh, you know, Christian influence? Is it because I put atheists on there? You know, should I just put Christian on it? Should I put my values aside just to be one of the group? You know, I should not have to do that. You know, you guys shouldn't have to do it either, in, you know, in your colleges. Even with private colleges that may be religiously focused. You know, that's your brand that you're associated with. You know, it's tough to be part of the team when things are like that. And when people aren't part of the team where I come from, you know, the, the, the unit breaks, breaks down and, you know, that, that's lives. You know, and, and, uh, and missions that, that can fail. So, at West Point, again, if we go back and look at these, look at these issues at West Point, We've got the cadet chapel. That one's, it's big. It kind of sits over the academy. Beautiful. I mean, I understand it's beautiful, but there's some ideas and, and some uh, values that are associated with that cadet chapel that, you know, might not be a big deal. Maybe they're a big deal and maybe they're not. And we've got chaplain's time. From the first time you go there, uh, during the summer, you know, we don't show up in September. We show up in July, you know, like the first of July. And everybody shows up, and you're a civilian, and you're in your shorts and your t-shirt, and then people start yelling at you and making you change clothes into uncomfortable wool pants and, <laughs> and, and suits. And they start uh, indoctrinating you into the military. You know, it's not in a bad way, <laughs> mostly, you know. But it's definitely indoctrination in the military. It's very stressful. It's very unpleasant. So on Wednesday nights, they have chaplain's time. The chaplain says, hey, come on out. We'll give you some cookies. It'll be a great time. You don't have to listen to how Christian you should be. You know, it's just optional, you know? And, you know, the Catholics, you go over here, and the Christians, you go over here, and the Jews are over there. All right, that's the end. That's the end, that's the end of the list. In fairness, they have, you know, like three three Orthodox and, you know, four Mormons. And, but, uh, but, you know, the atheists, you know, sir, they're, not, they're not reaching a hand. I'll say, oh, just go to the Protestant service. It'll be no big deal. They have cookies. You don't have to participate. <laughs> you know, we're not comfortable with that. That's not okay. You know, what, are they, what, what, has the, what have the chaplains done to reach out to us? And in this case, for chaplain's time, no. Just, just be like everybody else. That's the suggestion. So, so that just kind of adds. You know, that's a little concerning. Catholic representative. You know, each, each unit, most of the companies, as they're organized within the dorms, kind of dorm areas, uh, they got Catholic representatives, they got Protestant representative, and sh that's it. I tried to be a free thinker representative when I was at West Point. Didn't go over well, all right? They basically just said, no, you're being a problem, you're a troublemaker. Uh, and I thought about going forward, but I was kind of, you know, sleeping four hours a night, and I was tired. And, you know, I, want, I was concerned about my career, I didn't want retribution, I didn't want it to be a big deal, so I, I mean, I took it to a certain point, but, but then, you know, what else can you do? So what, that's why we need, you know, whether it's civilian, civilian universities, fellow student organizations that are visiting West Point, uh, as they move around, you know, MAP tries to support as well. Secular Student Alliance might be there. I try to, you know, apply that, but even then, it's concerned. Uh, uh, both of them came up. You know, there's a cadet prayer, an official cadet prayer. The Boy Scout Jamboree, we understand Boy Scouts discriminate against atheists, mm -hmm. all right? And, you know, I was asked at West Point, hey, you know, we've got the Boy Scout Jamboree coming out. You know, we're having cadets. We're sending cadets out to use West Point land so that they can hang out and have a good time and discriminate against atheists. <laughs> no, I feel bad just, you know, hating the Boy Scouts. You know, they do a lot of good stuff, but they also hate atheists, so. Atheists and gay people. And gays. Yeah. I don't want to leave you out, but, you know, we know that as well. Um, so, that, you know, I told them no, you know, so, so they were okay with leaving me out. 
but Boy Scout Jamboree still happened. The alma mater in the core, everybody knows the alma mater. We have another song that's basically exactly like another alma mater, because tradition is very important and we have to memorize these. So the alma mater uh, ends with uh, live, serve, and die, we pray, West Point, West Point for thee. That's, that's the closeout, so it's important. The core is uh, with eyes up, thanking our God. That's basically how it starts. Uh, so those both have religious aspects. You have to memorize them, and, and they're both extremely important for, for the tradition and the identity of, of West Point. Events, just like in the military, they all have prayers. It's a, it's a bit of a problem. Start and end, normally. And then Officer Christian Fellowship. I'm going to lead into, you know, before I leave in the next slide here, basically what you see is any individual thing maybe we could overlook, but all together it's a clear message about what, you know, as, as I'm tagged, as, if I'm tagged my identity as an atheist, you know, how can I fit in here into this collage? So in the ministries everywhere, you know, again, Officer Christian Fellowship, just like Athletes in Action, they're doing a lot of the same stuff from the video you saw at the beginning. Same thing they do at your universities, they're doing at West Point. They're everywhere, but we're everywhere as well. You know, these are real demographics that, that MAP is collecting, recent ones that have come out. You can see that, you know, Nazis in the military, you know, nuns, people that don't want religious support, 20% in the military. And if you go across there, no chaplains. That Force One Navy chaplain, Air Force chaplain, 0%. And I've got some Air Force demographics, the others haven't been so forthcoming. This will, this will be fleshed out, but it, it matches from 2004 to 2009, still running 20%, one in five, but no chaplain support, no, re, no outreach from chaplains. So until they do it, math is gonna do it. Uh, last note here, cash money for math. All right, leaders are important to us, all right? I, again, one of the similarities between SSA and math is that SSA reaches out to the student community uh, within, within universities, MAP reaches out to the military communities at the academies. We also want to reach out to the ROTC groups. Now some of you may not apply necessarily to, to, uh, for this, but we're looking for non theist leadership in action and, uh, and activism, military leadership and activism. This is going to open up here you know, from this conference. Uh, we'll have an online form. Basically you put your contact info and, and those, two, those two points. Talk about bullets to apply. You know, may follow up, and we'll select somebody for that. Hopefully, it'll be, you know, small, but but uh, do a semester or two of books. It'll open here on Monday and close in uh, two months. Anybody know what day what day that is? So, I think it's the twelfth. It's also Marine's birthday, so Marine's free thought. I think it's associated somehow. <laughs> So this is good. I know, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing this, and Matt wants to do a lot of the, a lot more of this in the future to kind of build, you know, the military and civilian community to kind of uh, draw leaders out, um, at least at least to a small extent, and grow this program. And we're happy to start with SSA.